Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail Community News and Thu Hiker Update. Well, we got folks going nubbo, folks going subbo, folks going everything in between, flip-flopping, and lots of folks still out there on the trail, so that's awful neat. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on out there on the trail. So Luscious Nate and Tupac, they are into Maine now, so they have crossed over the border and they have decided not to flip yet. Hopefully they're not going to or going to have to. Uh, they're going to decide that a little on further up the trail, but they are in Maine. They said they've had some amazing weather in the whites, and here's a couple photos he sent. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous up there. So, you know, people go, why do you hike? Why do you hike all these long distances? Well, these pictures right here is why we do it, folks. And it's just really awesome to see these pictures and to think about being out there. And they said they hit the white at a perfect timing for the leaves. So thanks for those uh, pictures, Luscious. Those are really neat. And then we got some folks that we've added that have uh, added since our last update. Praise team, they are new to the channel and they are doing a subo flip-flop. So they are uh, March 11th, started out from Route 311 there in uh, Salem, Virginia. They summited Katahdin on September 10th, went back to Salem, Virginia, and now they are southbound all the way to Springer. And their goal is to finish by December 7th. So they're liable to have some pretty cool weather between now and then, especially depending on when they hit the Smokies. Yak's update, he is currently north of Bland, Virginia, and he says there are some long sections before and after Bland that the water source has been really dry. And actually, I meant to say he's south of Bland, Virginia. I forgot he was doing Sobo. But anyway, uh, he says that there's a couple of cases of bottled water and bush beer at mile 610 at Camberlin Creek at Virginia 606 and whoever put those out there for him he greatly appreciate that that's that's trail magic that particularly in that dry section there from Parisburg all the way to Chestnut Knob that is a known really dry section even when it's wet raining out there it can be pretty dry uh, but he says he's still loving the trail life and living the dream so horsepower he is one of our calendar year triple crowns he has finished the PCT, finished the CDT, and he took kind of a week off to regroup and actually get to the AT, and he's back on the AT, so he's already been on the AT one time this year, uh, and he was way out in front of everybody, so he didn't really run into a lot of folks, but uh, he wound up getting back on, getting at Katahdin, and uh, climbing up there, and now he is Sobo back the rest of the way. Uh, he is south of Stratton. He said it's been a big shock coming back to the AT from the terrain out west. He says the terrain on the ta on the AT is a lot more difficult than it is on the PCT or the CDT, and he's already got trail legs times three under his under him right now. So, uh, but he says he's getting back in the groove of roots and rocks and climb. So, yep, if you're on the AT, you've got roots and rocks, and a certain part it ain't nothing but mud. So he said the highlight so far was the Bigelow Mountains. He's really enjoyed that. Said they're just incredible. Weather's been fantastic, but not sure how long that's going to hold out. And he's met a decent number of late Nobo finishers, and they've been really cool, he says. So before, you know, he didn't get a chance to meet really any people, didn't develop a tramway because he started so early. But and now he's meeting some Nobo folks as they're coming across, parting, you know, as they're coming at each other. Because he's so bow and they're no bow, and so, but he says they've been really cool. Enjoyed talking to them, and uh, and he's just still enjoying all these miles out there on the trail. Happy Mayor Couple or HMC, they are around Parisburg, heading into Delville. That is where they're going to be finishing their flip flop. And they said by ending going north from Springer, they got to see all the Sobos and Flippers and Lashers and just more. One, they said they've been having wonderful encounters with folks out there daily. And someday they want to list the 20 reasons why a Nobo Nobo wraparound flip, as they call it, is the best. So they call it a Nobo Nobo because they went from Delville to Katahdin, then came back to Springer, and now they're all the way Nobo to Delville where they're finished. So that's no bow both directions, even though it's a flip-flop. But they they think that that is the best way to do it. So that's awesome. Glad to hear things are going well out there. 
Hickory and Happy Mill, they are into the 100 mile wilderness and expected to summit Katahdin sometime this week. They have got quite the crew that's with them. And I had mentioned them before. They said, here's the crew that they were talking about. Um, Hickory and Happy Mill are the two in the middle that are in the, that are in the matching shirts. But you can imagine that a lot of hostels are not big enough to handle this whole crew, certainly with other hikers there and so they've been saying a lot of times if they couldn't get a place at a hostel this whole crew is wound up somewhere in a field so they have stayed together th for a long long time and kind of picked up people as they went didn't start out together but like a lot of families do they build it and occasionally somebody would get a day ahead and then they would wait on the rest of them or what have you but it's been a really neat experience for them and that's awesome looking forward to seeing all these folks around that sign we may not even be see the sign because there'll be so many folks around there but in any case looking forward to that so we've had some summit finishes up there uh this is two knees and uh kilt so i think i kind of messed up last week their picture and skid marks picture but this is the correct picture of them so they finished uh and then gazelle and speed sticks and bugs they finished at amicola falls state park so that they are the true subos that's their first pure subos that i'm aware of that that we have had on the channel here that have finished down at Almacola Falls State Park. So uh, they did the approach trail as well. And of course finished at Springer and then did the approach trail. So awesome. Appreciate that. Congratulations to Gazelle and Speed Stick. And then Huck, who is, if anybody watches the channel, you know, Huck always gives us a great update. And so he summited uh, October 6th and his summit number was 1,289. So he said it took him six months and seven days to hike the entire trail in from in just as he wanted it be no bow the whole way what an amazing journey it has been the people that he met the mountains around him even the rudy rocky and pointlessly rugged sometimes trail between the blazes all were beautiful says there were so many challenging times along the way and he's battled some illnesses lyme disease uh he's had uh, problems with electrolyte imbalance along the way some other things and he says, if you just keep going, you'll get there in the, in the end. Overcoming the challenges is half the fun. He says fun on the AT. The people I met were definitely the other half. Loved every minute of it. Wouldn't have changed a thing. All in all, I'm happy to have a fulfilled, to have fulfilled a lifetime dream. And it's been a pleasure sharing with y'all and everybody out there along the way. And as always, happy hiking. So thanks, Huck, for that. What a great trip it was. It was a pleasure. All the updates you sent us and just communicating that out there to the hiker community. You did a great job with that. We greatly appreciate that. So Truck Stop, he started on the April 15th and he summited in September 8th. Said it was an outstanding hike. When people ask what was the best part of the hike, I tell them hands down, it was the people I met along the way. You see a reoccurring theme here. Everybody don't necessarily talk about what the best part was the trail what they talk about is the best part was the people that meet so folks out there that contemplating a through hiker a through hike think about that the people that you meet out there how awesome that's going to be and uh even folks out there you know like me who are section hikers or lashers it's still the people out there that you meet that are just really awesome and everybody by and large up and down uh, without a doubt, they always throw out that the best part about the trail was the people. Uh, Ninja, he completed his through hike on September 14th, started March of uh, the 25th, and he says his family member Tapper uh, also is in the update and finished 914. And here's a photo of the two of us together. So here's Ninja and Tapper. Uh, congratulations to them. That's awesome. Uh, Pippin just finished on October 12th along with Quest and they were Nobo number 1,405 and 1,406 and they started on March 8th. And then Guido summoned a Katahdin on September 17th. He was a no pure Nobo and he started uh, March 4th and of course finished the 17th, 198 days. So I messed up last week, put the wrong picture for skid marks. I wanted to go back and make sure we had the right picture for skid mark as well as AARP, his hiking buddy that I hiked with him, and they finished on the September 27th. So great. Congratulations, all you guys out there and gals that finished 
and they as it finished. That's uh, that's awesome. Congratulations to all of you. We didn't, uh, of course, there's a lot of folks that didn't report in that have completed their hikes and summits and finishes. And so congratulations to all you folks out there. Uh, if you're a hiker out there on the trail and you're still on the trail, we want to include you. No bow, so bow, or flip flopper. So get that information to me. That is all my links are down below where you can get the information to me through email or DM. And then as well as if you're, if you summited or if you know somebody that summited, then please get that information to me. We want to honor them and congratulate them on their hike. So that's awesome. And again, all those links are down in the description section below. So some historical stats. This time in 2019, we were at number, uh, Sobo Summit, we were at number 1,115 compared to over 1,400 uh, right now. So that is awesome. Uh, and then the ATC stats show that around 728 completions, and this is Nobo, were completed in 2018 and 850 in 2019 total finishes, which accounts for about 19% completion rate. And then in 2019, my stats show that we actually had around a 34% completion rate. So not sure why we had such a big, huge jump there in 2019, but we did. It was a very large jump from 2018. And in 2020, of course, uh, we were somewhere around 287 folks that had summited. And here's uh, where one of the guys, uh, I believe this is Joe Hikes, where he summited this same time in 2020, he was number 287, Nobo Summit uh, for Katahdin. Of course, 2020, most folks got off the trail, and so we didn't expect that to be. You kind of have to throw that out as an anomaly. A couple folks that got off the trail, they reported to me, Crinkles and Snoop Dogg are off due to some injuries, and then the Funksters have, are hitting the pause button for this year due to knees and weather in southern Maine. They made it. Uh, over 1,221 miles, so that is certainly nothing to sneeze at, and they're going to come back next year and uh, do some section hiking, possibly finish up. So what have we got for registrations for 2022? So according to the ATC site, and just remember that depending on the year, depending on how many people are ticked off at the ATC, these figures are not the exact figures of how many folks are actually hiking the trail. A lot of folks don't register. Even when people aren't mad at the ATC, a lot of folks still don't register. For whatever reason, some people don't know they're to register, and some people just want to keep that private. So, But right when I say right now, I mean as of this past weekend, when uh, Sunday when I was taking down, putting this together, and putting this information together, Nobo, uh, what we had registered was 1,179 Nobo, Flip-floppers, we had 35, and Sobo, we had 17. That gives us a total of 1,231 uh, folks that have registered just as of Sunday. So a little context there. Uh, if you go and look at these, you'll see that there are some different colors within these, uh, these uh, candlesticks that they've got there. And the reason is some of those folks that registered there are actually Nobo. So if it's a light green, it's Nobo. If it's a dark green, it's a flip-flopper. And the way the ATC, they used to register Nobo, Flip-Flop, Sobo. They don't do that anymore. Uh, they register where you're starting from. So the graph with the, most of the light green is people starting their hike from Springer. The graph with most of the dark green is people starting their hike from uh, um, from Harper's Ferry, which is presumably a flip-flopper, but the folks that are starting from Springer, some of those folks are mixed in as flip-floppers. And so, and then folks that are subo, uh, some of those folks are, are flip-floppers as well, but the light blue is typically all uh, subo. So it gets to be just a little bit confusing. I don't break them down like that just because it would take way too long for me to go and count up all the individual ones that are not there. So I'm just saying that everybody's starting from Springer's Nobo and everybody's starting from Katahdin is Sobo and just understand there may be a little in interpolation there. So lots of videos are being posted right now. The class of 2022 uh, go to my, uh, there's a link down below where you can go and find the folks that have signed up. We got over 50 right now that have signed up for the hiker support uh, list. And there you can go and find their social media. 
you can go and subscribe to them and give them an attaboy or go and make comments and just let them know how much you enjoy watching their videos. So we give everybody a, you know that. Just keep them pumped up all the way throughout the course of their hike. Um, one of the things I, I did want to mention was over the years, the amount of registers have kind of been plateauing since 2016. So this is a graph showing that you know it it really took off and then when Hal or Bill Bryson's book came out and then it went down and then it started taking off again and so sometime around 2016 it started plateauing and typically now we're looking at somewhere around 3,900 people that are typically starting out registered for a through hike every year. So we talk a lot about the 2022 but do not forget about the 2021 hikers out there. There's a link to their through their social media as well. That's a separate page. So there's a link down in the description section to that. Go and find that and go and keep them pumped up. Of course, not everybody that's on that list is out there. So you'll kind of have to go around and pick randomly. And I do have that color coded, uh, but it hasn't been updated yet. So go and support those folks as well. A little bit of trail info out there. So camping in Baxter State Park uh, is uh, typically closes after October 22nd. So you know, the Birches and Katahdin Stream uh, will close then. It doesn't mean the Katahdin Trails close. So, you know, Baxter State Park itself doesn't close. The, uh, the Hunt Trail system, which is actually the AT shares the treadway with the Hunt Trail up to Katahdin, that may be closed for periods due to weather and winter conditions. Baxter State Park strongly recommends that you Finish your hike by October 15th because they may close the Hunt Trail slash AT Trail up to Katahdin uh, anytime after October 15th and really before, depending on what the weather is. doesn't look like the weather is going to be a factor for closing by October 15th, but certainly uh, you just you don't ever know what's going to happen. So Baxter State Park rec highly recommends you do that, and they will close that, uh, the Hunt Trail system, when the it gets uh, too much snow on it, but not enough to protect the plant. So they have some plants up there that they that will be damaged by hikers hiking on it if they don't, you know, or not have enough snow cover on them, or if they're just, you know, really too wet up there. So in 2019, it was November 1st before they closed the trails, and then they opened them back up December 1st because they had enough of a snowpack to where those plants were protected up there. So keep all that in mind. Even if the you can't camp in there after October 22nd, you can still hike through the park. It's just you know, if you're not at Birch's campground there where they are allow hikers to, or a certain number, I believe it's 12, they allow to hike there overnight before they hike up to Katahdin, which gives them about a 5.2 one-way trip, 10.4 round trip back to Birch's. Otherwise, if you or outside the park and you have to hike in, you're going to significantly add to those miles. And that is, a lot of folks think that is the hardest portion of the hike getting up to Katahdin because a lot of it is hand over hand, crawling over boulders, very high, very dangerous. A lot of people, a lot of sobos who start their hike there quit before they ever get to the sign because it's so tough. So keep that in mind there as you are no bow and you're heading your way up there to Katahdin. Uh, the Alder Gathering was held this weekend. It was a great time with the hiker community. That's why I'm putting this out late here this week. Typically I'm here on Sundays, but it's late this week because I was having a good time this past weekend when I normally put this together up there with the hiker community at the Appalachian Long Distance Hikers Association Gathering, which is a time when uh, we all get together. Uh, this time it was in Abington, Virginia. Next year, it will be in a different portion, and I'll figure that out where it's going to be and put that down here below, but it'll be somewhere a little further up north next year, but it was a good time. Uh, appreciate everybody coming up to me. I will be putting out a video uh, for that uh, a little later just so folks that have never been can see what it's all about, but uh, it was uh, just really a good time, and thanks to everybody that came up and uh, let me take their picture with them. That was really neat just to be around the hiker community. One thing I want to caution you about is the hunting season right now. Wherever you're hiking, there are lots of places on the trail that it is hunting season, so I would recommend you wear something orange 
uh, on top of your packs, something, certainly something very bright. Do not wear branches or antlers on your pack uh, because there's a lot of hikers or a lot of hunters out there who are trigger happy and they may not know the difference between a pile of sticks uh, and antlers. So be careful out there and, uh, and just to watch out for each other. If you've got something blaze orange, wear it by all means. Well, folks, don't forget to go and sign up. If you're a hiker and you're hiking next year, go and hike, uh, sign up for that support list. The link to the form to do that is down below as well. Like I said before, we got somewhere around 53 uh, plus that have signed up so far, so we want to include everybody that wants to be included on that. And uh, looking forward to the 2002 season or 2022 season getting ramped up here as well as more of the 2021 folks finishing and just uh, celebrating with them. Folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.